Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and today I am going to talk about an important package which can help you with working with AI inside your Laravel applications. Yes, you see it right, the package name is Prism and today I am going to talk about how Prism can really help you have a very unified way of working with different AI LLM service providers and very easily use a lot of the tools and APIs that most of these LLMs have to offer. Just as an example, there are certain LLMs which will give you text while there are certain who will stream text. There are certain tools which will allow you to use your own custom tools so that you can do specific kinds of things and there are even LLMs which understands structured data so that you can get a very predictable response. And the thing is, all these LLMs have different ways of communicating with them. However, what Prism does is, it gives you a very unified way of working with your code and at any point of time, you can very easily switch between providers to get the desired output. So let's see how we can do that. Now, before I dive into the code, I would like you to go through the documentation of this package. It's a very nicely written documentation, very detailed. And I would say that you would find most of your questions in here. And the, the package owner is quite uh, active with uh, you know, solving bugs and stuff. So if there's anything uh, such as a problem, raise the ticket I'm sure it will get fixed pretty quickly now in terms of the provider they are right now supporting about nine different providers okay and some of the common ones are open AI you must know that there's grok which allows you to run a lot of uh, LLM models through cloud they have a generous free tier and we have Olama as well which means you can run Olama locally and use your own models. All right. Now, there are quite a few things, quite a few concepts through which we can go through. And today in this video, I'm going to talk about um, only a few. Okay. Not everything out there. Um, so I'll talk about text generation, streaming output, calling functions or tools and what are schemas. Okay. So let's get started. I have a working code and what I will do is first tell you what the setup looks like. Okay. When you install Prism, you will get a config file, which is like this. Okay. Prism.php. And in here, if you see, I have uh, the Olama URL, which by default is localhost because it is running as a service over here. Then I have my grok, I have the API key and then I have my, uh, where is it, open, AP, open AI API keys as well. Okay, so I have all of them set in my .env and now we will start utilizing the code. Okay, so the first one is text generation. Okay. A simple question and here I'm using grok. Let's see what the code looks like. So what am I doing over here? I am calling prism.text and I'm defining the provider grok over here. I'm using the mixtral model. So this is my provider. If you see there are quite a few providers um, and I'm using the grok. Okay. Then this is my prompt which is what is the capital of France generate. And what it does is generates the response and there's, and there's the text, which uh, I will get as a response. Okay. So let's see, I have all of them ready, but I will still refresh so that you see how things go about there. Okay. It's loading. And if you see the message says the capital of France is Paris. Paris is a major European city and a global center of art, blah, 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 blah. So this means, it generated the text. Now I can change the question. Okay. 
and let's just refresh and it gives me an answer because it knows what Laravel is right so this is the bare minimum the basic things and uh, there's nothing major that we are doing now in here we used grok let's move on to the next example and you will understand the beauty of how prism allows you to use different providers what i will do is also put it on the right hand side so that you can understand the beauty of and the simplicity of this package so both are invokes and if you see this is my stream text controller and over here i'm using the open ai provider but if you see i have prism stream and here we have prism text well, obviously one was text generation and one is stream and hence the only difference. Otherwise, the API is pretty much the same. Um, it's like, you know, I'm using this model. So using here also we have using, we have the provider and then we have the model standard way. Then I have a system prompt in here. I have a prompt. You could only use this as well. No problem. But I have done here a little bit more just to give you a sense that you can pass a system prompt otherwise if i remove this they are pretty much identical okay i also have that timeout thing over here as well okay now because it is a stream i have this little bit of code over here where it echoes out the uh, every every chunk that is being generated by the llm otherwise rest of the things are very straightforward same like the grok implementation okay now uh, let's see how the streaming works now this is where gpt40 mini is being used i couldn't get that to stream with um, other service providers for example grok or olama doesn't support the stream as of now so i couldn't do that okay this is text this is my stream you will see this coming up let me refresh and can you see the lines are being written one after the other so this is the streaming of the output right what happens is when you have uh, the need to show text pretty quickly right if you do uh, generate text you know it's uh, uh, the first example right which is this in here what happens is the llm will first generate the entire response and then it will re return back the entire response in one shot. Now, typically this would take some time. And if you are building some kind of a rag system, you would see that it will take about five to six seconds or sometimes even 10, 12 seconds to respond to the user's question. So if you don't show anything there, it's bad UX. What stream allows you to do is as the LLM is generating the response, you are sending it back to the end user and that's where the user feels that the, the LLM is fast because obviously it has generated some content which the user can consume. So you are not making him wait for the entire response. Okay, so that's what the stream does. Okay, all right. So I have demonstrated stream as well. We use the text generation using Grok. We use the stream using OpenAI. Now a few examples using local Llama models. Right. So third example is tool execution. Now, before we go into tool execution, let's understand what's tool execution. Let's just say we asked the, the LLM what is Laravel, right? And it was able to give us an answer because it was trained on the knowledge and based on that, it knew that Laravel is a PHP framework. If I ask it a question like, what's the weather like today? How will it know? In this case, what happens is we can use tools to fetch information from different sources and provide the LLM with latest information. Okay. You can do weather API calls. You can do database calls. You can even do a search you know a search to google and different service providers search service providers get the result 
get the context and then respond. Okay, tools are that powerful. So let's see what I have done over here. So I have a tool which is called find a user by name. Now, this is a description, finding a user from the database. It expects string parameter because we are going to invoke a function, a tool which is nothing but a function and that function needs a parameter. So what we are saying is this tool should be invoked with a parameter. What the parameter is, it's the name of the user. Okay. And then this is the tool. So using function string name. Okay. I am doing a val dump of the name which is being passed by the LLM. Then I'm querying the user table. If you see user query where first, and then I'm returning a sentence. How am I doing this? Well, that's pretty straightforward, but I'll still show you. I have some uh, dummy data over here, which I have seeded. And that's how my uh, MySQL database has some records to work with. So I created this tool. This tool is ready. Now I have these four questions. Okay. I'll show you my uh, seeded again. So I have these four questions. I have sorry, three questions. Who is Amitabh Roy, who is Chandan Das and who is Mangesh Pawar. And if you see Amitabh Roy, Chandan Das, Mangesh Pawar, these are three users which are in my database. Okay. So what will happen is in here again, we are using prism text provider is Olama. I'm using Mistral. Um, when you're using tools, you should define steps. Okay. Then I have a system prompt that you are an UI assistant, AI assistant, sorry, answer the tool, uh, answer the question with the tool, blah, blah, blah. You can read that out. And my prompt is my question. I'm adding the tool over here. So the LLM now has a tool and then I do generate. Let's see. So I'll come over here and I'll refresh. The first parameter was Amitav, the name. Then it says that the Amitav is in the system. He is based in India and according to the information provided, he has total years of experience about 5, 15. However, it is important to know this is where the LLM is doing a little bit of smart things, which it was not supposed to do, but that's local LLM. They're not very good. Typically with uh, the open AI, you will get very good results. But the important thing to know over here is it said that Amitav is based in India and based on the information, he has 15 years of experience. Similarly, Korea, Chandandas lives in Korea, four years of experience and Mangesh Bawar lives in England uh, with 44 years of experience. Wow, that's, that's what you know, my data seed was. Okay. And you see, if Typically, you will ask this kind of a question to your LLM. You won't get an answer, right? But we used a tool. We interacted with our database and we got the information. And that's how we empowered the LLM to get that information and respond back to us. That's the beauty of tools. There's one more thing which I would like you to show. And I have two examples, which is schema based response. Okay. So what happens is so far we have seen that these are textual information. It is fine, but it is only okay when you are showing the response in the chat interface. But if you want the LLM to give you a response in a way so that you are able to programmatically do certain things. Well, you, if you are very good with regular expression, chances are that you will be able to make something out of it. But we need structured data, right? And that's where the schema objects come into place. So over here, I have an object schema. Name is movie review. And these are some properties, title, rating, summary. Okay, and I'm saying that these are the required fields. I need these three fields from the, uh, the data. And then I'm again using something called a structured. So we used text, we used stream, and now we are using structured. Okay. The provider over here is Olama. I'm using the deep sick R1 8 billion model and I'm defining the schema. I'm saying that prism give me structured data, 
with this schema and the prompt is review the movie inception and I do generate. Now the beauty here is that it got the structured data and I can literally return this response. So if you see over here, this is the response that I get for the movie inception. I'll refresh it again so that you know that it is not hard coded or generated like that. Okay, let's wait for a bit. Okay, so ratings, inception, blah, 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 the summary. If you want, I can change it to maybe, let's see which uh, years uh, Titanic does it pick. Well, it picked up the most famous one, which is the James Cameron, which won so many Oscars, name, rating, and a summary. Right, so now you can see the data is so predictable. Now you can literally write code over it and you can use that information for further processing. <clears throat> and this is where schema comes into play, right? And there's one more example I'll show you. See, I have user information very similar to how I use the tool. In here, I have a collection, a very simple one, which is I have the name, I have a description of that user, but I don't have database like records over here. You know, I had name, created at, country, years of experience, right, which I had very clearly defined. Let's just say we don't have that. I have just a description, which is name, the description, and in the sub description it says, if you see, Amitabh Roy is a software developer with 15 years of experience. He works with PHP, Node, Python, and he likes Laravel. John Doe, sales manager, seven years experience. He does business development and likes playing football. What I am doing over here is with schema. What, what does the schema define? The schema says it's user information, a structured user information. That's a description. And what are the three fields I, I require? I require the name, experience, likes. Now, if you see, this is not structured data in, in the source, but I am expecting it. That's the beauty, right? So if you see, I did prism structured. I'm using Olama DeepSeek. Okay, this is the schema that I'm expecting. With prompt, describe the person with name, this and details this. That's it. This is the only context that I have provided to the LLM and I'm expecting this. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, I will do refresh. See the first one is Amitav Roy experience greater than or equal to 15 years likes level. John Doe more than seven years likes playing football. Right. And maybe And I'll add this role over here as well. Let's see. Okay. So it's loading an undefined key role, which would be because I haven't added this as a required field. All right. Now refresh once more. Let's see. Perfect. I got the first one. It says role software developer. Second one, it sales role sales manager. So as you can see, even from unstructured data, if you want the LLM to <coughs> kind of give you the information in a very structured way and understand from the content, you know, it can do that for you. So yeah, guys, this, this is what I wanted to show you in this video. I'm very excited to play around with Prism and build AI powered applications in Laravel because that's where I'm the most comfortable. Tell me what you feel about this whole package and what we are capable of doing with this and I'll be very interested to know about that. If you like this video then do click on the thumbs up icon and because you have watched it so far definitely subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already. Bye.